For over half a century, the world has looked up and seen a sky dominated by two titans, Boeing and Airbus. From the moment you book a flight to the second your plane touches down, their influence is inescapable. This isn't just a duopoly. It's the very foundation of modern global aviation. Their engineering marvels became the lifeblood of the global economy, shrinking our world and connecting cultures. They didn't just build machines. They built the infrastructure for globalization, creating a system so entrenched it seemed unshakable. For decades, they have reigned supreme. But in the sprawling industrial heartlands of the East, a new power has been quietly gathering strength. Fueled by immense national ambition and decades of strategic planning, a challenger is emerging. This isn't another minor player nibbling at the edges. This is a calculated assault on the established order. It's here to rewrite the rules of the game. This is the story of Comac. China's state-backed aerospace champion and its audacious plan to shatter the status quo. At the heart of this plan is the C-929, a wide-body jet designed with one purpose, to finally break the West's long-held grip on the skies. For decades, the skies have been ruled by just two names, Boeing and Airbus. They've been locked in a fierce yet exclusive duopoly a high-stakes two-player game where the price of entry was so astronomically high nobody else could even afford a seat at the table. The sheer complexity and immense capital required created an impenetrable fortress around their shared kingdom. From opposite sides of the Atlantic, these two giants established their empires. Boeing, the American titan, ruled from Seattle. Airbus its European rival, ruled from Toulouse. Their dominance was staggering. Between them, they controlled over 99% of the large passenger jet market. This isn't an abstract concept. It's a tangible reality for every global traveller. Every time you fly, whether it's from London to New York or Dubai to Sydney, the aircraft waiting for you on the tarmac will almost certainly be a product of one of these two manufacturers. Their influence extends far beyond the assembly line. These companies don't just sell planes. They are the architects of the entire modern flying experience, defining what air travel looks and feels like. But while they competed fiercely for every airline contract, battling for supremacy in a rivalry that has defined an industry, they also shared a fundamental, unspoken commonality, a shared heritage that shaped their philosophies and their global perspective. They were both unequivocally Western. Let's rewind the clock to 2008, a year etched into modern history. The world was reeling from the global financial crisis. Stock markets plummeted and iconic Western companies teetered on the brink of collapse, creating a moment of profound economic vulnerability. But amidst this turmoil, a different story was unfolding. While the West was preoccupied with damage control, China saw a strategic opening. It was a calculated move to pursue a long-held national ambition, to build its own commercial airliners, and challenge the established world order. And so, in Shanghai, the government launched the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or COMAC. This wasn't just another company, it was a national champion, backed by immense state funding and the full weight of the country's political will. Its mission was as simple as it was audacious, to break the decades-long duopoly held by Boeing and Airbus. The goal wasn't just to build planes, but to establish China as a self-reliant aviation superpower, ending its dependence on Western technology. COMAC's first foray was the ARJ-21, a small regional jet. But this initial attempt was far from a triumph. The project was plagued with difficulties, taking over a decade to certify. 
Critics dismissed it, pointing out its design was heavily based on the old McDonnell Douglas MD-80, labelling it a copycat project. For China, however, it was a crucial, if clumsy, first step. But what the world didn't realise was that China wasn't trying to win fast. It was learning. Every mistake was a lesson. Every delay was training. China wasn't building just a plane. It was building an aerospace ecosystem. Suppliers, engineers, testing centres, wind tunnels, simulation software, all from scratch. By the 2010s, COMAC launched its second project, the C919. This one looked serious. It was a narrow-body jet meant to compete with the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320, the world's most popular planes. After years of development, the C919 finally entered service with Chinese airlines. It wasn't revolutionary, but it was real. Meet the Comac C929, a massive long-range, wide-body jet built to go head-to-head -head with Boeing's 787 Dreamliner and the Airbus A350. Originally, it was a joint project with Russia, combining China's funding and Russia's aerospace experience. But after 2023, that partnership fell apart. Sanctions, politics and mistrust pushed Russia out of the deal. Everyone thought the project was dead. But China didn't quit. It took full control. So, what makes the C-929 special? For starters, it can carry 250 to 350 passengers and fly up to 6,500 nautical miles. That means non-stop routes like Beijing to London or Shanghai to Dubai. Inside, it's designed to be flexible. Airlines can choose between high-density seating for budget carriers or luxury layouts with lie-flat business seats and premium cabins. And here's the kicker. It's cheaper. There's a saying in aviation. You don't truly own your planes until you own your engines. For years, China had to rely on Western engines, like GE's Leap Series, for its aircraft. That meant every flight depended on American approval and export licenses. But when Washington hinted at blocking engine sales to China, Beijing got the message. That's when China began developing the CJ-1000A, its own jet engine. Of course, this story isn't all smooth flying. Comac faces three huge challenges – production, certification, and trust. First, production. Boeing and Airbus can roll out dozens of planes every month. Comac is still learning how to scale. It has hundreds of C-919 orders pending, and adding the C-929 to that list won't be easy. Second, certification. But Comac has one massive advantage its home market. China is now the fastest-growing aviation market in the world. By 2030, it'll surpass the US with over 1 billion domestic passengers every year. That means Comac doesn't need to win Europe or America yet. The C929 isn't just a plane. It's a statement that China can build, innovate, and compete on the world stage. To the West, Comac isn't just another company. It's a strategic threat. It challenges not only Boeing and Airbus, but the geopolitical balance that's defined aviation for 50 years. Even if Comac overcomes every obstacle, production, certification, trust, the next few years will be tough. Boeing and Airbus won't just sit back. They'll cut prices, improve technology, and fight to keep their dominance. But China doesn't need to win tomorrow. Maybe one day soon you'll walk into an airport, board a flight across continents, and notice something different on the fuselage. Not Boeing, not Airbus, but made in China. And that moment will mark more than just a new jet. It'll mark a new era in aviation.